welcome to Labor Lens. I am Sharon Ijasson. On this week's edition of the program, we'll focus on activities that happened in the year 2022 and we'll also take other news stories. We will be right back. In 2022, a lot of activities shaped the labor sector. In February 2022, students, parents and other citizens woke up to the announcement by members of the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, regarding commencement of an industrial action. For full payment of ASU number salary and employment with integrated payroll and personnel management information system IPs, and non-adoption of the University Transparency and Academic Solution have continued to shortchange our members. Next, therefore, result to embark on a four-week rollover total and comprehensive strike beginning from Monday, 14 February 2022, which is today. The Non-Academic Staff Union of Universities also embarked on an industrial action, protesting against the payment platform by the government IPs. When there is the will, there must always be a way. I say on my honor that those states are just acting irresponsibly. If they put their priority rights, they pay workers' salaries. Are these not the same governors that are flying private jets? Are these not the same governor that today they are holding meetings in London, some of them are in Paris, this and that? Where are they, where are they getting the money which they are using to fly? I have been in this country for years. I have seen when Jack Conde was governor of Lagos, never traveled outside the country. Never for once. During the year, Nigeria experienced high inflation rates multiple times. The Director General of Nigeria Employers Consultative Association, NECA, spoke about expectations of organized private sector in the year. The value of the Naira to, to increase. If you redesign, um, will it um, stop the issue of insecurity? If you redesign, will it um, fundamentally reduce the issue of inflation? So it's, it's less of whether we redesign or not. And I think whether these businesses are more concerned with the real issue of business sustainability and business competitiveness. In June 2022, the International Labour Organization, ILO, held its 110th International Conference in Geneva, Switzerland, with a theme centered on least developed countries, crisis structural transformation, and the future of work in view of implications of current global challenges. That our circumstances constitute a sharp reminder of the foundational truth upon which the ILO was constructed and which have been borne out time and again over the last century and is again today. That lasting peace depends on social justice and that the achievement of social justice depends upon peace. So those who resort to war deny social justice and those who obstruct social justice endanger peace. The National Union of Petroleum and Natural Gas Workers, Nopeng, rewarded one of its members, Ejiro Otarigo, the brave tanker driver. Otarigo was said to have jumped into the tanker when he noticed it caught fire while offloading diesel at the petrol station and drove it far away from the center of town. I want to say I'm particularly very proud of that young man uh, who, out of courage and bravery, you know, not minding what could happen to him at that particular point, was able to uh, move that uh, burning tanker to, you know, a safer place. You know, but again, is uh, is I, I also attribute that to the trainings that that the driver have, you know, on, undergone this period. Uh, in every profession, there are obviously danger side of it. And, uh, and one thing we've always done as a union is to uh, continue to train the driver because they carry very volatile product. You know, and uh, uh, the union has continued to indulge in training and retraining to ensure that uh, in going about the activities, uh, these are peculiar areas that they must also look into. 
Dock workers from four African countries resolved to form a common front in pursuing global standard in signing of collective bargaining agreements, CBA, with multinational terminal operators. The proposal is starting with EPM terminals. We need the support of uh, IITF so that we can have what we call a uh, global content that involves all these multinational companies where the CBA is supposed to be a single CBA. I think that is the stand of uh, when we have a single CBA, I think uh, it, will, it will stop all this mess that these multinational companies are doing to African countries. In August 2022, the National Union of Electricity Employees directed workers in the power sector to down tools and commence an indefinite strike over pending labor issues with the transmission company of Nigeria, TCN. We don't pray for strike. Strike is difficult to manage. You know, if you study strike management, it's difficult, it's expensive, you know, both human and material resources. So you don't wish to embark on strike, and that's why it's not frequent. You know, but when it becomes the last resort, it takes place. So we have been praying that we should face other things and not those issues raised. Because those issues are threat. They are threat issues. <clears throat> if not for the laxity or uh, of most people in government, that strike wouldn't have been there. Because there was an agreement in 2013 on the issue of payment. There was an agreement again to reinforce it after another strike in 2019. You know, and before the uh, speaker of the uh, House of Rep, uh, who broke that meeting. I said they will not implement. He said they will implement. We argued. In October 2022, Lagos State Governor Babajide Samulu announced an upward review of salary of workers in the state. As a country, there is high level of inflation. I know that as a country, there is high cost of living. I instructed at a cabinet meeting, I instructed the head of service office and the minister of staff training and pension to start work on how we're going to increase the entire salary of the public service. Apart from the salary increment, the governor also disclosed that the first phase of the distribution of official cars will commence. I'm aware that you still want a few more buses to create new routes. Abi? Abi? Okay, I'll work it out with the head of service before the end of this month, we will see the number that we need to bring in. <clears throat> we'll start with a brand new 100 vehicles for our directors before the end of this month. So we'll start doing it in phases like that. The year 2022 wrapped up with the conference by the International Trade Union Confederation, ITUC, for its fifth World Congress, which boasts of bringing together more than 300 national trade unions every four-year circle to set the global agenda for trade unions. Solidarity! Solidarity! Aluta! Victoria! The contour of colonialism and provide social protection and economic justice and development for all. I cannot end this address without making a special appeal for our mother continent, Africa, to actualize the Sustainable Development Goals. At the current pace, Africa is likely to meet only nine out of the 169 SDG goals. The continent is only on track for 13 indicators out of the 244 Nearly 40% of all Africans are still living in extreme poverty, and Sub-Saharan Africa now accounts for two-thirds of all global extreme poverty. We need a greater inclusion of unions in developmental process through stronger social dialogue practices and institutions, ensuring workers can contribute to shape policies to fight poverty and inequality. Workers are very expectant on who will lead the country in 2023, as the Labour centres held different town hall meetings with presidential candidates. The Labour centres were able to revive the Labour Party and take it to an enviable height in the year on the review. I learned a lot from this conference, which 
if you go back home, you must introduce what you learn here. One, the way the conference is organized, and the most important thing, how the vote was casted. There's about 90 million membership, and which within two hours, the election has been conducted, and even the winner has been match. That one is a very good one that we have to introduce such a system back home. Though the NSC election, that is how the election, the, the, the way the conference is organized, is something we should learn how to do. I want to, from the bottom of my heart, congratulate our global president, Ayuba Waba, for the leadership role he has uh, given to this very, uh, to ITCU, because uh, uh, he has made us proud. We are highly proud of him, a Nigerian, an African, a Nigerian, to lead uh, uh, the global force of workers all over the world. Uh, it has been a great thing, and Ayuba Waba, without mixing words, is a great leader, uh, which uh, I believe uh, workers all over the world, uh, we, we missed him for his uh, leadership role. Uh, he has uh, tried to bring every race together uh, in terms of the struggle. So he is a great gentleman, an activist, a unionist to the core, uh, globally, not even within the country. He is an asset that uh, uh, the world should be able to reckon with. Ayuba Waba as president of uh, the Nigerian Labour Congress and uh, just the immediate past president of the International Trade Union Confederation has been an excellent internationalist. Uh, we as Africans, we are proud. Uh, when, we, when we chose him to be our flag bearer in the global uh, trade union movement, we, we knew what he, he, he's bringing and we are excited. And uh, it's a testimony, everybody can say it, that he has succeeded in helping to navigate uh, our organization very well and uh, he has taken it to a safe place where the burden has been handed over to another generation to if, uh, successfully continue where he, uh, the, uh, he and his team have stopped. We are excited that he has not disappointed anyone at all. More, 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 more importantly, we are excited that he has shown the world, the world that Africa has what it takes uh, when given the responsibility to lead a global organization. And uh, I could always add that he has uh, effectively opened the door uh, for those that are coming behind, so that when these ones want to enter, nobody will look at them on the, on the color of their skin, uh, but rather they will judge them uh, uh, on the competence of their abilities and their uh, good spirits and commitment uh, to make change continuously to happen for all. We are proud of him. Uh, we want to congratulate him for his stewardship. Uh, he has done well, and we wish him well in his uh, future endeavors. On the profile interview segment this week, I'll be speaking with the General Secretary of the Nigerian Labour Congress, Comrade Emmanuel Uwoja. He brings us up to speed on the exploitation of workers in the year 2023, while giving us highlights of activities that happened in the year 2022, especially the ITUC conference. Welcome to the program. It's good to have you on the program today. Thank you for having me. Okay, a lot has been happening in the labor space and um, for year 2022, there were lots of activities that shaped, uh, that shaped the labor sector. And also, uh, Nigerian 2023 elections is drawing near, NLC election also is drawing very close. Um, but I would like to take you back to the Amatan School um, activity that took place in December 2022. Um, can you bring us up to speed on the need for this engagement, this um, training and the training of members of the union? Yeah, as an organization, we have consciously always uh, 
made education a priority for our members and leadership. And uh, the, as you will uh, understand, the Hamilton School this uh, 2022 was the 22nd edition of uh, the program. So we've been running it uh, for a while now. And uh, it consistently, that has been done. We have uh, what we call the Rain School and the Hamilton School, trying to follow the pattern of uh, the known seasons in Nigeria with regards to uh, weather. Uh, the rain school we do in the southern part of the country and the Hamatan school, we've tried to domicile where yeah, the Savannah region where uh, such reflection uh, will also impact uh, to uh, rhyme with uh, the name of the school. But basically, it's our own effort at creating uh, enlightenment, uh, workers' education for the leadership and members of the trade unions uh, so that outside their known discipline or area of work, uh, we try to equip them with uh, workplace uh, skills. So moving forward, what, do you, what is the action plan for the Nigerian Labour Congress, especially as Nigerians prepare to go to the polls come February 2022? There's been a lot of engagement. Are these some of the things that you're discussing with several um, presidential candidates that um, the NLC and TUC have been engaging with? Yeah, uh, our, our views have been consistent. Uh, and the ruling in this callousness has been consistent. And that is why their consistency has uh, taken us deeper and deeper into the dark hole. Uh, consistency is the only beacon of light that is available because we have maintained consistently that the only way forward for our country is production, not importation. The only way forward for our country is to take advantage of our population, to get our people working and not to get our people buying up uh, products that are done from outside because we have the population to consume what we produce. We have the population to to uh, and the natural endowment to produce what we need to consume. So the way you where we have the disconnect is we have a ruling elite that are fixated on, on importation. They they have lost the the natural common sense to have things done. The pride to have things done within uh, the environment. They they have uh, sold themselves to uh outside uh, imaginations rather than uh, growing uh, growing their community and growing their country so uh, you find them confidently going for the simplest ailment outside the country they want treatment you find them getting the, the simplest uh item in their household from outside the country so when you have such people then seeking to grab power you realize that it's not yet too good for us that the the struggle is a long way, uh, but uh, you then hear a breath of fresh air from uh, the Labour Party uh, candidate who tells you he's committed to production. And uh, you can't see a worker shy away from production, because that is what we're about. Uh, so uh, clearly for us is the message we feel that should be resonating, not the message of sale, not the message of importation, not the message of subsidy. What should be resonating with every Nigerian is the hope that we can produce because we'll, we'll have the populace, we'll have uh, the know-how, we'll have uh, the manpower. Uh, Nigerians all over the world, from every refinery, we'll have the engineers, from every hospital, we'll have Nigerian doctors, every spell of life. What is missing, what we don't have, is pride in our own, and that, and that should come from leadership until we get leaders that are proud to be Nigerians, that are proud to leave Nigeria, uh, which the worker ex exemplifies. Uh, that is the challenge we have. We are proudly Nigerian. We believe in our country. We believe that things can be done. But we have a really elite that are headed in the opposite direction. Okay, very quickly, um, during the year 2022, um... Uh, one major event that happened in the labor sphere is the International Trade Union Confederations uh, meeting, ITUC conference, 
which was held in Australia. President Ayuba Waba served um, before now and um, he presided over the um, conference in Melbourne, Australia. Um, can you bring us up to speed on his contribution um, at the conference and what it means to Nigeria and Africa? Yeah, that, that, that was one of the finest moments for Nigeria as a country uh, in 2022, having a Nigerian preside over the, uh, a meeting of the workers of the world globally and uh, having him receive in uh, audience and uh, uh, people speak to a meeting he was presiding. You had uh, President Biden of America uh, make a, a speech uh, to the program. You had the Prime Minister of uh, Australia. You, you, it was a, practically a who is who. In, in the world, and we had our own uh, leader of the Nigerian workers presiding and doing us proud uh, to the admiration of uh, the workers of the world. It's uh, someone the workers love across the globe, across continents, and uh, it was quite emotional that he was uh, uh, completing his tenure and uh, was uh, obviously, uh, if the rules uh, were to be uh, allowed. The world of workers, the workers across the globe were willing to give him uh, uh, a, a fresh uh, endorsement. But uh, we're operating in an, era, an arena where rules are respected, uh, where uh, there is certainty in, 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 in things being done. And uh, he discharged his duties uh, proudly. He was under his watch that Africa produced the first director general of the International uh, Labor Organization. No small uh, effort from uh, the working people that uh, helped drive that process. It was under his watch that the, the world rode through the pandemic with workers across the world being on the front lines. Uh, it was clearly under his watch that the world also opened back to, to economic activities and, and the world of work uh, tried to grow out of the shock. Uh, so it, it was quite an emotional war for us Nigerians and we were glad that uh, he did us proud. He's uh, quite someone that Nigeria should be very proud about. During the conference, a lot was said as regards um, the world of work and the need for a better wage, wage justice, and more. And can you bring us up to speed? I know you served under the um, standard application um, committee. Can you bring us up to speed what workers um, across the globe should be expecting? The, the fact is, uh, just like uh, the pandemic, uh, COVID pandemic has shown, there cannot be a sane world where you have a few people imagining that they will live in opulence and luxury and then the rest will be in misery. Uh, that can be the world anybody will aspire to. Uh, so uh, the, the, the workers of the world and uh, clearly the working families are helping push the narrative for a new social contract, a, a new order that appreciates that humans are, are all uh, worthy of living Humans are all worthy of decent job. Humans are all worthy of this decent environment. Uh, humans are all worthy of uh, decent wages when work is done and uh, a, a reasonable uh, uh, social protection floor that leaves nobody behind. So those were issues that were very potent, uh, uh, discussions that were quite heated, that were quite emotional because uh, it was shocking to know that while people were locked up under COVID, a few individuals were smiling to the, to, to the bank uh, anymore uh, when nations were, were in penury, were in misery. And uh, that lifestyle, that uh, brand cannot be encouraged. So clearly uh, for us, there is the need to rethink the social contract. There is the need to rethink the perception how the world should be managed. Uh, climate justice is, is a challenge. Uh, it's not just uh, the challenge of climate change, but whatever transition that needs to be done needs to be backed in a justifiable way, in a judicious uh, manner, 
that uh, takes care of everybody because we know that, uh, like we say in the labor parlance, that injury to one is injury to all. It's going to be difficult to manage our planet when uh, there is no justice. Uh, it will be difficult to manage the planet where a few people think they can lock up themselves in their cocoon and then leave the rest of the world to uh, their fate. Uh, the world can move in that direction. And clearly uh, that resonated. We had a President Baden who was proud to say, hey, he is not ashamed to be called a working people's president. He's not ashamed to identify with the trade unions. And uh, we'll have uh, labor. Uh, packed ideological and uh, 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 the manifestos uh, driven uh, parties winning across the globe from Australia to Brazil to Norway. Uh, impact was being made. People are getting humane and uh, that's the way to go. And we're looking forward to a new lease of life in our own country also that it cannot be business as usual. People need to take a step back and uh, reassess their, themselves. Finally, uh, what would be your expectations for the year 2023? What should Nigerian workers be hoping for in this new year? Uh, we've almost reached the breaking point that it will be difficult to keep a worker down. Uh, the working families will need to feed the working families will need decent health care. The working families will need uh, shelter. The working families will need mobility. Uh, so clearly, we we'll look forward to genuine public infrastructure that uh, can take care of uh, the needs of the working families. Uh, investments, genuine investments in public good and the realization that a worker is worthy of his wages and uh, decent wages at that. It, it hurts when you see a worker uh, being lapooned and pummeled over 30,000 Naira. And then you hear the elite when they are costing the, the lunch or breakfast they will have at their high bra uh, round tables, they will cost them at 17,000, 15,000 a plate. And that is what you're telling a worker with a family of four to take for a month. Uh, the, the shock of the reasoning shows clearly that common sense takes a, a flight where the elite is concerned. And we need to get back, get them back to reality. And that is what we expect reality to come to play in 2023. Thank you very much for your time. It was an interesting time um, we spent with you. Thank you for having me. And that's all we can take on today's edition of the program. Join us next week for a fresh edition of the show. I am Sharon Ijasson. Thanks for watching and remember that labor creates wealth.